Hello and welcome back to the channel. We are continuing our breakdown of the medical science of The Last of Us. This is the penultimate episode of the first season titled When We Are In Need. A big shout out to for Surfshark VPN who are kindly sponsoring this video. Thank you for their support on the channel. I'll talk a bit more about them later on. As with all these breakdowns, this will contain lots of spoilers and some really pretty brutal scenes too. Let's check it out. How much do we have left? Venison. Yeah, I'll grab it. It's a little random medical fact for you. If you have a near exclusive diet of very lean meat like rabbit, the citizens of this town are in danger of a rare illness called protein poisoning, also known as rabbit poisoning. So you basically get it from eating a diet of protein and nothing else. It's kind of like an extreme Atkins, but you don't get any fat either, which tends to be why you get it from just eating rabbits as they're super lean. So these people really need some other source of fats or carbohydrates, otherwise protein poisoning will cause severe gastrointestinal symptoms, and if continued just on this diet for weeks, can even be fatal too. We get our first look at Joel and things don't look much better. He's still semi-conscious and his wound looks severely infected. It's very red and looks like it's oozing some discharge here. We talked multiple times about the initial life-threatening issue from this injury being blood loss and that would have been the priority to stop the bleeding as this can kill you within seconds to minutes, obviously. We're hoping that bleeding stopped and certainly Ellie's suturing attempt that we saw in the last episode would have helped any bleeding coming from the muscle wall. However, now we are really paying the price for not being able to wash that wound out, not being able to explore the wound to remove any dirt or wood that had been left in by the baseball bat. And we were also forced to use non-sterile gauze to halt that bleeding and also to stitch up with whatever instruments we had lying around. So infection was always going to happen now the worry is Joel might be going into septic shock. What would ultimately help Joel now that the bleeding is stopped is counterintuitively to open that wound back up, give it a bit of air, try and give the chance for that pus to discharge and give it a washout as best you can. And those stitches that Ellie put in, although they have saved his life, are probably now a bit of a vector for infection to grow on. So they probably need to come out too. Even with doing this, Joel desperately needs treatment with fluids and antibiotics to be able to stop him going into septic shock if he hasn't already. Drop your rifles! Now! You never quite know who might be trying to follow you and it's the same when you're browsing online. So that's why you should check out Surfshark VPN who are kindly sponsoring this video. I know what you're thinking, that was a super smooth link to talk about our sponsor. A VPN or a virtual private network keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all the information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data protected from big companies or cyber criminals. As many of you know, I was recently traveling for several weeks and using any free Wi-Fi I could get my hands on. So using Surfshark VPN was vitally important across all my devices to protect my emails and social media accounts from being hacked. One of the other really cool features is you can change your virtual location to other countries, meaning it looks like that's where you're browsing from. And this is great for someone like me that watches a lot of TV shows and movies, as it means I get access to more content from the streaming services that I pay for. Also, it had the added bonus while traveling that I could still watch all the sports from the UK, in my case, I watched the Six Nations Rugby whilst I was on a hammock in Brazil. To get Surfshark VPN, check out the URL in the description below. You get a discount and three extra months free for using my promo code. So thanks again for Surfshark for sponsoring this video. We can trade you for some of the deer. We have, what do you need? We have boots. Medicine. All right, go talk to Howard. He's got a case with some penicillin. Bring back two bottles and a syringe. Yeah, nice work, Ellie. So she's gonna get two bottles of IV penicillin, so two doses. It's, 
It's not a lot, but it's certainly better than nothing. And also penicillin is exactly the antibiotic you want in this situation, often first line for these type of wound infections. Most likely the bacteria that is causing this wound infection is one that already lives on your body and that has somehow gotten into the wound, like Staph aureus, which lives on your skin, Strep pyogenes, which lives in the back of a lot of people's throats, Enterococcus, which lives in your gut, and sometimes these wound infections can be caused by Pseudomonas, which doesn't colonize you, but is just everywhere in the environment. Penicillins are our first choice for wound infections because they're really good at killing all of these organisms apart from Pseudomonas as this bacteria has developed resistance to most penicillin antibiotics. And kind of worth noting that strains of the other three bacteria can also be resistant to multiple antibiotics too, and increasingly so. So it's a big public health issue that in the future we may find more and more infections that are difficult to treat because our usual antibiotics just don't work. But considering this is the last of us and humanity has pretty much disappeared, they probably don't have the issue we have of over prescribing antibiotics that is speeding up antibiotic resistance. So in a way, there are good points to a deadly fungal pandemic wiping out most of the world. Joe, 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 where the f do I put this? Yeah, okay, so where do you put this? Well, not usually there. This is actually something that a lot of people would do in this situation. I assume that because they gave her a syringe that this is an IV preparation of penicillin, so she should inject it slowly into a vein. Probably her best chance of finding a vein would be the antecubital fossa, so inside of the elbow. In reality, in hospital, we'd have a cannula in the patient, so a small plastic tube that stays in the vein so we can give multiple doses. And given the fact this is made to be injected into the vein, there's no harm from an infection point of view of injecting this directly into the wound. You certainly wouldn't do that with oral antibiotics. That would be very bad. And antibiotics given locally, so to a specific site, are certainly a thing such as ear drops or antibacterial creams, and generally a pretty good idea because it stops you having the systemic side effects of antibiotics. But I'm guessing this preparation of antibiotic is designed to be given into the vein, so I actually have really no idea whether, you know, injecting it like this would be overall good or bad because we just don't do this type of thing. It's totally possible the drug may be an irritant and cause kind of more inflammation, so it could be bad, or it's certainly possible that its antimicrobial properties would actually help kill the bacteria significantly. And really in this situation, I don't blame Ellie for giving it a go because the fact Joel is still like this probably means he's tending towards septic shock so that's probably gonna kill him pretty soon. We mentioned hemorrhagic shock in the previous video, so losing so much blood that your blood pressure drops and you can't perfuse your organs. So how can sepsis cause this type of shock too when you aren't losing any blood? Well, what happens when you have a local infection, your immune system is activated and chemicals are produced that make your blood vessels dilate and cause the blood vessels to be more leaky. This is just what you want as this means you get more immune cells to the area to prevent the infection and start the repair process. However, this is less good in a severe infection as you get so many more chemicals and immune cells that end up circulating throughout the whole body, meaning all of your blood vessels end up dilating and becoming leaky, and this is what massively drops your blood pressure and ends up starving your organs of oxygen and nutrients. So this is how you get a low blood pressure without actually losing any blood and this is called septic shock. So it's actually your immune response to the infection that ends up killing you. And it also explains why it's vitally important to not only treat with antibiotics to get rid of the actual infection, but also to give lots of fluids to bring up that blood pressure and keep your organs perfused. But if anybody makes it down here, you f kill them, you got it? Joe, Joe, do not fall asleep. Yeah, you kind of see this type of line in movies a lot, begging people not to fall asleep. It's gonna be very difficult for Joel not to do that. It's like he doesn't have a lot of control over falling asleep because he has a severe infection. And as we said, he's likely septic, so a low blood pressure and severely dehydrated. This would be denying his organs of nutrients, so 
his blood will be building up toxins as his kidneys aren't working, they're not getting enough blood, and this would make him extremely lethargic and likely delirious too. Your immune system also releases chemicals that make you feel really unwell, presumably to rest a lot, so your body has a chance to fight the infection, but still makes you feel awful, uh, specifically one called TNF-alpha. And giving him a knife here too, I mean, <laughs> that is wishful thinking. He might just be able to build up enough of a stress response to release some adrenaline to maybe stay awake for a short time, but enough to build up enough strength to fight. <sighs> I don't think so. With that low blood pressure that we're really worried about he has from the bleeding and the sepsis, he'll probably stand up and just pass out straight away. Ellie here sustains a traumatic brain injury. We see some classic symptoms, blurred vision, disorientation, ringing in the ears. But the most concerning thing we see is the loss of consciousness for what appears to happen for a couple of hours. You definitely want to do a CT head scan of a patient like this to rule out any skull fracture or intracranial bleed. Now this injury of falling from a horse is definitely something not to underestimate. Even if the CT scan is negative, Given the symptoms, it's likely she's had a significant concussion, basically a huge force on the brain from being rattled around, and this impact stops the brain cells from working as well, and so will cause headaches, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, dizziness, mood and sleep problems, and these can last a few weeks. So everything she does from here to try and get out of this situation is gonna be so much more difficult. Oh my God, Joel, he's up and awake. Go get him, Joel. Yeah, nice, nice one, Joel. A penetrating injury to the posterior lateral neck. So what we got here, jugular veins, carotid arteries. So a complete transection of any of these would mean you lose consciousness in a few seconds probably bleed out in a few minutes. And if somehow he's missed these, we might be seeing an injury to the larynx, which could suffocate you from bleeding and swelling into the windpipe. Ah! Ah! No, no, oh. Shit. Jesus, no. Frickin' hell, Joel. My, he's entered beast mode. Another penetrating injury, this time with a knife to the cardiac box. Very high mortality, this one, and very common injury to see in TV shows and movies, probably because it looks so brutal, and it is brutal. Obviously, your rib cage is there for a reason, to protect your vital life support organs of your lungs and your heart and those big blood vessels. Best case scenario here would be a punctured lung, so a pneumothorax, which would potentially be survivable. Worst case scenario, it's gone straight into the heart and either one, ruptured the ventricles of the heart, meaning uncontrollable bleeding, or two, bleeding around the heart, which can build up and start squashing the heart, stopping it from contracting what we call cardiac tamponade. Either of these two without urgent medical help, it's game over. And he told you what you wanted. You mother f you. I ain't telling you shit. It's okay. No. I believe him. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. That is a hell of a line, though. It's okay. No. I believe him. No. But on this guy's death certificate, as a result of that blunt force trauma with that metal pole, you'd probably write skull fracture and traumatic brain injury. And looking at Joel, though, he's made a pretty miraculous recovery. I wonder if actually this is just all a hallucination. He's actually just drifting into delirium from his septic shock. Ah! 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 
yeah. Good on Ellie. We see a hyper extension injury to the finger. So this would stretch and potentially tear the flexor tendons and also the volar plate ligaments that are on the palmer aspect of your fingers. If one of these has a complete tear, it might also break off a piece of bone that it attaches to, what we call an avulsion fracture. Wait, 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 don't, don't do it, please don't do it, please don't. You had your chance. No, no, I'm infected. I'm infected. Really, really tough scene to watch. But just thinking about this for a second, Ellie is clearly bluffing here about being infected, but she might inadvertently be right. She might be an asymptomatic carrier. We mentioned this very early on. So she may have some fungus in her body, enough to infect someone else, but it's just her own immune system keeps it at bay enough for her not to ever get symptoms herself. So this guy still might be in a bit of trouble. And you know what? I don't give a crap because <laughs> he's an absolute pr Now she would have turned by now. This isn't real. That looks pretty <laughs> and basically we see an injury that is almost identical to what Joel just did on that other guy. So Joel has certainly taught her well. He would be very proud. Exactly what we said before. So transection of the carotid artery and veins. You're gonna, you're gonna struggle to survive that one. <laughs> God. So freaking tense, man. Anyway, let's just talk about the injury here. So Ellie stabs this creepy dude in the left iliac fossa. Pretty much identical injury to what Joel sustained and very similar to what Bill sustained too. It's almost like <laughs> this is the modus operandi of the writers of The Last of Us. And through Joel, we've seen the kind of progression an injury like this can have without medical attention. So initial worry would be the bleeding and then later on, infection. absolutely insane. I mean, you sort of expect Joel to rock up as the hero, uh, but seeing Ellie do it on her own, man. I mean, fair play, although that is gonna mess her up for a long time. No! Get out of me! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! My word, what a moment. Can I just say the acting on that? Absolutely brilliant. Wasn't it good, Daisy? And so there you go. What a phenomenal episode. And that scene at the end of them walking off together or hobbling off together. It gave me goosebumps. And I hope you've also enjoyed my look at this episode and maybe learned a little bit about medical science along the way. If you have, then please click the like button. And as always, if I've missed anything, I'd love to hear your theories in the comments down below. Only one episode left of season one now. Been a hell of a ride. So thank you for all the support on these breakdowns. And thank you too for Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. I'll leave a link in the description with my promo code so you can get that money off and that three months extra free. I hope you're all well and I'll be back soon.